Today we are going to discuss an experiment from physical pharmacy. Determination of first order reaction rate constant. So here you can see the aim. The aim of this experiment is to determine the reaction rate constant and half life of an ester in 0.5 normal hydrochloric acid at room temperature. This is the aim of this experiment. So here we are going to find the reaction rate constant and half life of the given ester. Principle. As we know first order reaction is defined as a reaction in which the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of one reacting substance. Here you can see the integral equation for first order reaction K1 equal to 2.303 divided by T log C0 divided by CT. This is the integral equation for first order reaction. Here. K1 is the first order reaction rate constant. Rate constant express the relationship between rate of reaction and concentration of the reacting substance. So K1 is the first order reaction rate constant. C0 is the initial concentration of the reactant. Ct is the concentration of the reactant at a time t. If you get this value K1, that means our first order rate constant from the experimental data, then you can easily calculate half-life value using this K1 value. You know what is this half-life? Half-life is defined as the time required for the concentration of the reactant to reduce to half of its initial concentration. Okay, that is the time required for the concentration of the reactant to reduce to half of its initial concentration. That is half life. Okay, T half equal to 0.693 divided by K1. This is the equation to calculate half life. Pseudo first order reaction. Pseudo first order reaction is defined as a reaction which is originally second order. Okay, a reaction is originally second order but under certain experimental condition it is made to behave like first order. Okay, such type of reactions are known as pseudo first order reaction. For that purpose we should maintain any one of the reactant in large excess. So that the concentration of that reactant will not change during the reaction. So it follow first order kinetics. This type of reactions are known as pseudo first order reaction. Acid hydrolysis of an ester is an example for pseudo first order reaction. Now let's talk about the procedure involved in this experiment. First of all, you should measure 100 ml 0.5 normal HCl into a stoppered conical flask and keep that conical flask in a water bath for equilibration. Okay, you should take a clean conical flask and then measure 100 ml 0.5 normal HCl and transfer this 100 ml 0.5 normal HCl into that conical flask and keep that conical flask in a water bath for equilibration. Then you should measure 10 ml of the given ester in a clean test tube. Keep that ester in the same water bath for equilibration. Within 10 minutes equilibration will take place. Uh, after that you should mix the acid solution and the ester sample and then keep that reaction mixture in the same water bath. You should immediately after mixing you should withdraw 5 ml of the mixture with the help of a pipette and then you can transfer that sample into another conical flask containing 10 ml of ice cold water okay so you should take another one conical flask uh, then add 10 ml ice cold water into that conical flask okay so immediately after mixing you can withdraw 5 ml sample from the mixture with the help of a pipette and then you can transfer this sample into that conical flask. Okay that conical flask should contain 10 ml of ice cold water. Then you can add few drops of phenolphthalein indicator into that mixture. Then you should titrate that reaction mixture against 0.25 normal sodium hydroxide solution. This value of alkali consumed represent V0. 
okay this value represent v0 so that you should withdraw samples periodically at 10 20 30 40 50 60 60 and 75 minutes okay repeat the same titration procedure and this value okay the volume of alkali consumed now represent vt initially the volume of alkali consumed represent v0 after 10 20 30 40 50 60 60 and 75 minutes you can withdraw samples then repeat the same titration procedure then you get a value that value represent vt now the volume of alkali consumed at the respective time that represent vt after 75 minutes you should heat the reaction mixture on a water bath bath at 60 degree celsius for 20 minutes then cool the reaction mixture to room temperature after that you can withdraw 5 ml mixture into a conical flask that containing 10 ml of ice cold water repeat the same titration procedure then you get a value that value represent v infinity initially the volume of alkali consumed is v0 at different time interval the volume of alkali consumed represent vt at infinite time the volume of alkali consumed that represent v infinity so this is our procedure for this experiment uh, from the experimental data you can calculate reaction rate constant and half life A reaction rate constant can be determined by substitution method so substitute the data in the equation k1 equal to 2.303 divided by t log v infinity minus v0 divided by v infinity minus vt we know the value of v0 vt and v infinity so we can substitute that values in the equation then we get k1 value what is k1 k1 is first order reaction rate constant okay so we get k1 value for each time then we can calculate average k1 value if we get the average k1 value then we can easily calculate half life using the equation t half equal to 0.693 divided by k1 okay the reaction rate constant we can also estimate by graphic method in graphic method you should plot log v infinity minus vt value on y axis and time on x axis okay then we get a straight line and the slope of the straight line into 2.303 that gives our rate constant in graphic method you can plot log v infinity minus vt value on y axis and time on x axis okay then we get a straight line first of all you should find the slope of that straight line then that slope is multiplied with 2.303 then we get our k1 value then we can calculate t half using this equation 0.693 divided by k1 so, so here comes our calculation the first column that is time time in minutes you can see different time uh, 10 minute 20 minute 30 40 50 60 and 75 minutes these are different time intervals uh, we are withdrawing samples from the reaction mixture and uh, doing titration Uh, the next column that represent volume of sodium hydroxide consumed the volume of alkali consumed that represent second column after titration you get different value for this here uh, v0 is the initial titer volume okay then next column is v infinity minus vt v infinity means volume of alkali consumed at infinite time should after heating uh, we are doing the same experimental procedure we are doing the same uh, titration procedure then we get a titer value here that represent v infinity so the third column is v infinity minus vt here we get v infinity value v, v t means volume of alkali consumed at different time like 10 20 30 40 50 60 and 75 minutes 
so the third column is v infinity minus v t and fourth column is log v infinity minus v t and the fifth column is log v infinity minus v zero divided by v infinity minus v t okay the very next column is a one equal to two point three zero three divided by t log v infinity minus v zero divided by v infinity minus v t so in this column we get different rate constant value for different time period okay then we can calculate the average k1 value in the second column we get volume of alkali consumed at different time that means after 10 minute we get a value here that is uh, vt okay that value represent volume of alkali consumed at 10 minute after 20 minute we are doing the same titration then we get a value here that represent volume of alkali consumed at 20 minute then uh, here volume of alkali consumed at 30 minute and here the volume of alkali consumed at 40 minute like this we get different values at infinite time we get v infinity at infinite time means after heating we are doing the same titration procedure then we get a tighter value uh, that represent v infinity okay the third column is v infinity minus vt here we get v infinity value and that v infinity value minus vt that is here that comes here uh, and uh, this is v0 v0 is the initial volume of alkali consumed once you get this v infinity value then you can find v infinity minus vt value here 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 and here okay once you get this v infinity value you can find this v infinity minus vt value at different time okay then you should take the log of this v infinity minus vt then next is log v infinity minus v0 divided by v infinity minus vt calculate this part also then after that uh, you can uh, substitute this value in this equation k1 equal to 2.303 divided by t log v infinity minus v0 divided by v infinity minus vt here we get log v infinity minus v0 divided by v infinity minus vt value then you can substitute that in the equation k1 equal to 2.303 divided by t and then you can substitute that value here log v infinity minus v0 divided by v infinity minus vt value is here you can substitute this value in the equation okay 2.303 divided by 10 into log v infinity minus v0 v infinity minus vt value you can take from here and that and then you can calculate k1 value so the next uh, so the next column is uh, rate constant value Uh, this is the equation to determine the first order rate constant k1 equal to 2.303 divided by t log v infinity minus v0 divided by v infinity minus vt we have log v infinity minus v0 v infinity minus vt value here so you can substitute this value in the equation then you get rate constant value at different time then uh, calculate the average k1 value if we get this average k1 value we can substitute that k1 value in this equation then we get half life okay we can also find this reaction rate constant by graphic method uh, by plotting log v infinity minus vt on y axis and time on x axis okay by this graphic method also we get the value of reaction rate constant and half life so this is our experiment here comes the report of this experiment the reaction rate constant k1 of the given ester in 0.5 normal hydrochloric acid is by substitution method and graphic method by this two method you can find the reaction rate constant value then next is the half life of the given ester in 0.5 normal hydrochloric acid is 
by substitution method and graphic method so this is the report of this experiment by using this two method by using substitution and graphic method we can find our reaction rate constant and also half life so this is the report of this experiment hope you all understand if you have any doubt you can ask me thank you